What's going on guys? This is Erkin from HDD Recovery. Today I'm working on a Surface Pro 6. SSDs are not removable on those uh, logic boards. They're, they're soldered in. They can be 128, 256, 512 and even 1 terabyte. And they look like this. This unit came in uh, from a local client. Uh, they did some work on it. You can see that around where the CPU is, it's all crusty. This is not the first time I work on Surface like that. And um, if there is a problem with SSD, this tool is not going to be effective at all. But if the problem is um, with something else on the board, uh, causing the board not to work properly, uh, then it would be quite uh, effective. Now, uh, Surface Pro does use BitLocker encryption as well. So uh, this is not a tool that I would recommend you buying. Uh, just so that you can start getting these done because you will be facing the uh, encryption issue which without PC3000 you will not be able to solve but with PC3000 I'll show you how easily and quickly this type of case can be resolved as you can imagine these boards are fairly thick and they take in a lot of heat when you try to remove something from them especially something this big so I highly suggest uh, to use um, like a proper preheater uh, the one that I use for small SSDs and uh, flash memory devices is not going to cut it. It's just the heating area is just too small. Um, at my Bank Street office, I have a massive preheater that was used to heat this board and uh, safely pull the component off. Now let's have a look at the surface and <laughs> surface and find out uh, what are we going to do about this. So looking at it here. We see uh, there's some um, some mask that got scraped, but it's all between the same plane, so I'm not gonna be worried about taking care of it. I already flattened it out and um, ready to take it to the next step. But how do we read such a device? This may look like a regular standard BGA um, chip to you that I cover on this uh, channel quite frequently. By the way, guys, if you're new here and uh, you're just learning about data recovery or if you found yourself in a situation where you need data recovered, my channel is all about data recovery. So if you have a failed device, chances are I can provide some help for you. So uh, usually uh, to reach out to us, you can find our link in the description box, um, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel and uh, hit the notification button not to miss any new videos. But getting back to the topic, this uh, unit here uh, works very similarly to what uh, cell phone devices have inside and chips similar to this EMMC, they have a NAND and a controller built inside. Adapters, they do exist, but they're not super common. This adapter is going to be okay with device that is functional it's a it's an adapter it's not a tool to make your failed ssd work better it's not a tool that can uh, you know help you uh, get access to uh, the device using some sort of vendor ways it's basically um, a conversion of uh, pci express ssd into a usb is what this is just like any uh, SSD that would be going into a similar adapter can be connected through USB port to uh, some sort of uh, host. That's what this was designed for. So cases where this would be useful um, are only uh, cases where the motherboard is damaged and the device doesn't power up. If the device powers up but it doesn't boot, chances are the problem is on the SSD itself. And in this case, uh, that adapter is completely useless. I have not been able to get access to um, anything that would not uh, that was still powering on through uh, the interface of Surface. So today we have a <laughs> we have some luck, guys. So somebody sat down on their Surface, cracked the motherboard or something. Uh, it came in already with signs of some previous repair work. I'm not an expert on logic board repair. I'm not even going to go in that direction. But uh, I could tell that some work was being done in an effort to try to power it up. And if uh, they didn't succeed, there must have been some reason for it. I don't know. But uh, because the unit simply stopped working because somebody sat down on it, tells me that chances of uh, SSD getting damaged are very, very small, right? and makes sense. So what this adapter does is when we open it up like this, the door pops over and it has an indicator 
in this corner here for the first pin. Our chip, because we already, you know, cleaned it up and prepped it, also has a, a similar key indicator and uh, it's indicated by the dot right there in the corner. So we just uh, line them both together, line them up, lock it in. And this is beautiful uh, design. The socket is really nice. So um, you lock it in, right? It needs to be fully open to lock it in. And then it has this uh, directions for open and for the test. So for the test, we're gonna turn clockwise until it stops. That means that it applied enough tension to the unit to make connection. I'm going to use a PCI Express adapter uh, for NVMe from PC3000 connected directly to this thing here. And I'll show you how it works. Also very important to note, guys, and this is, this is probably the, the, the biggest thing to note, is that Surface Pro devices are coming with BitLocker engaged from factory. So if I was to take this device convert it, let's say, to a USB, plug it into my uh, workstation, I would not get any access to the data because I would be prompted with BitLocker and the BitLocker would request a key. Do I have that key? No. Uh, will uh, Microsoft give me that key? No. It's a standard key that is used for their devices from the factory. However, we're in luck today because we have this unit right here. It's PC3000 Portable 3. Well, maybe you can do this work on other PC3000s as well uh, because it's all part of the data extractor complex. But uh, with PC3000, we have access to some standard keys that come on OEM devices such as Dell, uh, maybe possibly even Lenovo. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I know for a fact that there are some keys that the data extractor has possessions of that we do not need to gain access. And decrypt decryption of such devices can take place even if we don't have that key. So first thing we do, we use port zero for this adapter. It's the only adapter that can be selected for NVMe device. We select port zero. Now to increase our speed for disk imaging, uh, obviously the best result would be obtained with um, like a solid state drive as a target, but I don't have one. However, I do have a regular one terabyte hard drive, which I will connect, link it up to port two and connect power to our device. This will power on the unit Inside of the utility, we um, we're able to select different ports. So if we want to select uh, port two as our target, we can select it. I'm not doing any other work, so I don't need my port two or port one today on this unit. So this is totally fine. Um, up here, it automatically knows that it's a M.2 PCI SSD that's connected, but there are two types of uh, devices that can be selected, NVMe and AHCI. So which one is it? We, if we don't know, we can just select detect and it will detect it for us. It knows that it's a NVMe. Uh, so those two ports are selected. We open up our utility and uh, now to test it, we're just gonna power on the unit, wait for this light to come on. We're just gonna go ahead and select universal utility to confirm we get passport information from the unit. Uh, we see that the SSD is made by Samsung. It provides uh, its serial number. It gives us a uh, type of firmware it has and capacity says here that it's 512 gigs. If we try to read the data, we see right here that it's got a uh, 55AA signature. In order to decrypt BitLocker uh, SSD by surface, we will have to start a data extractor task. So we're gonna select port zero as our source and port two will be our target. If we look at the file system now, we can see that it's locating uh, partitions and they're listed right here. This uh, lock right here indicates that there is encryption of some sort. Drive is encrypted. Would you like to decrypt it is what it says. I'm gonna say yes. It locates the master key and tweak key and just like that, we have access to NTFS partition. Now that NTFS partition, if we do a map on it, gives us MFT map of 4.55 gigs. So I'm gonna scan that first. And uh, if it shows that there is a lot of data on this device, I will just probably clone the whole thing. If the unit is encrypted, uh, we don't have an option to just simply select and scan anything here. 
we need to build a map using uh, drive info first so go ahead and do that and now we have an option to scan selected chains through here or through here so let's uh, scan the MFT and find out uh, how much data is actually on this unit MFT has been scanned we have our virtual disk built and as you can see this is the uh, the root and the file directory so we got our user profile if we select desktop documents and pictures which were the priority things for this client build a map of all of these files and folders it will give us the total uh, amount of space that is used up by these files we'll select them all and clone them if the cloning is successful we'll end up with a fully green map for them and uh, at that point the data can begin to extract so here we see that uh, all of this content had been extracted fully if we build a map of all of the sectors that have not been processed yet that are not green if we go and build um, sectors that are not red skipped errors and loss of readiness let's see what we end up with we end up with nothing that means all of the content had been extracted I've put this whole device through cloning process. If we look at the task statistics, it's a complete image. Zero bad sectors, everything had been extracted. This is 100% recovery, guys. It's not a cheap adapter, um, and keep in mind that you do need to have PC3000 to decrypt the image. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment underneath this video. This is what helps us grow, and I really do appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next episode.